Gangs and Guns Minister Bill Blair has absolutely no clue about what guns are causing problems here in Canada or how they get into the hands of people committing the crimes for that matter, but he does know who the bad guy is. That's lawful Canadian gun owners. And his total ignorance was exposed in some really great work by the folks at the Canadian Coalition for Firearms Rights. Well, I, we, I have no problem with, with things that make sense. But the fact that the government can't solve their problems, can't solve their crime problem, so they want to come to me and take property from me without justification, then that's a problem for me because I haven't done anything but follow the rules to the letter. That's from a video posted at Code of Arms YouTube page. It's about 35 minutes long and I cannot recommend it enough, especially if you want to sneak a peek inside the mind of a liberal gun grabber. You know, those people who want new laws for guns but don't know the ones already on the books. And that man explaining to Liberal Minister Bill Blair the pretzeled logic of the Liberals' policy on gun rights is Rob Giltaka. He's the CEO and Executive Director of the Canadian Coalition for Firearms Rights. Giltaka and Tracy Wilson, the Vice President of Public Relations for the Canadian Coalition of Firearms Rights, are on a bit of a cross-country adventure together called the Integrity Tour. They're driving a motorhome across about one-third of our beautiful country in search of liberal integrity, Godspeed to them. Now, according to their website, they are going to try to engage with liberal candidates about Justin Trudeau's failing policies on crime and the scapegoating of gun owners from Montreal to Regina. And Rod and Tracy, well, they actually found Bill Blair at his campaign office. He's the minister in charge of border security and organized crime reduction. It's a fairly new ministry created just for Bill. But instead of focusing on, you know, border security and organized crime reduction, Bill Blair is targeting lawful Canadian gun owners with new legislation, changes to safe storage laws, and reclassification with possible confiscations. And part of the reclassification and confiscation process is that Bill Blair would love to make the AR-15 illegal in Canada. The AR in Canada is already a restricted firearm with the highest level of licensing required to own it, and you can only ever use it at a gun range. And Bill Blair admits that he's going to punish Canadian gun owners for crimes he sees happening in the United States with that model of firearm. Now look what happens when Tracy confronts Bill Blair on it. Here. The truth of the so, matter is my AR-15 that is semi-automatic and limited to five rounds functions no differently than my hunting rifle. Just because one is made of wood and I take it out in the, in the forest and shoot deer with it, it still functions the exact same as my sporting rifle. Tracy, I think a, a really good question you might ask is, is ask of the people who, who choose to arm themselves with those weapons when they're engaging in activities of mass murder. I don't speak to mass murderers, you know, so I, I don't have that opportunity. And, and, but, but look at, you know, the, the choice they make is rather clear. Um, the AR-15 that you just mentioned is overwhelmingly the first weapon of choice for people who have engaged That's in That's the most activity. common rifle in the world, of course. It's, it's, and it's also overwhelmingly the most common weapon used by mass murderers. So, not in Canada. Not in Canada. And in the United States, yet. they've had some, the, the overwhelming majority of multiple victim public shootings that occurs in the United States actually occurs with handguns. But the AR-15 has been used, but there's 10 to 12 million of them in circulation. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of that. Right. And I will tell you. The, the That's why it shows up. I'm you know, you'd think the gangs and guns minister might know like a little something about firearm crime statistics in Canada, especially when he's a former chief of police like Bill Blair is. Now, I went digging and I could not find a single instance of anyone ever committing an AR-15 related mass murder in Canada in our history. The best I could come up with, I found in an anti-gun article in theconversation.com, it details the history of the AR-15 in Canada. It reads, in 1982, so friends approaching 40 years ago, for those of you keeping track at home, Saskatoon police shot an 18-year-old hostage taker named Richard Landry after a lengthy standoff. Landry was dressed in battle fatigues and armed with an AR-15. He fired 50 rounds during the standoff and shot off one of his hostage's fingers. The other instances of AR-15 related crime detailed in that article refer to police finding them in the hands of gangsters who are, of course, possessing them completely illegally. After about 30 minutes of Bill Blair's face getting redder and redder and redder because he's finally confronted by people 
who actually know what they're talking about as opposed to the people who are completely ignorant of gun laws, you know, the people he normally preaches to. Well, Bill Blair had had about enough. Just watch this. Right, so and, it, and your comments are suggesting, suggesting that some of them would fire on the police? I never said that. No, never so said that. I never said that. Never that, said that, Bill. See, Bill, that's see, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. You know, so, so far, not only did you, do you actually don't, you don't know the storage requirements for a restricted firearm, and I, you said twice on TV that you can just take your handgun and put it in a locked room. That's untrue. You have two legal, two legal ways to store a handgun in a, in a safe a vault or unloaded secure locking device on the firearm in a locked case. Uh, it, so actually, not, not in a room that's, that's securely locked. You're thinking non-restricted firearms. Yeah. So someone that's enforced the law, apparently, for so long, you think you'd know even the smallest detail about that. And then you just told me I said something that I didn't say, and it's on video. You could even go look it up yourself. See, this is a problem, right? And that's, I'm just looking for honest discussion, honest conversation with honest people that really want to solve the problem, and you just told me a lie. That I said that people are going to open fire on the police. I would never said that in my life. Not in my life. The video is right there on your computer. So I, I you know, I don't watch your video, now, Rod. I have to. Well, that. apparently you just wrong. did. You just told me well, that you did. I, 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 it's been reported to me. Oh, so that, it's a, so it's that, it's, that it's, you, it's you hearsay. Said, no, but I've seen it written that, that you said uh, implied <laughs> that people would be, you know, children could be injured in in, in, in the crossfire of this thing. And, and quite frankly, I think that no, I never, I never, I never said crossfire. And, and the problem is when you pay the media six hundred million dollars to tell your story, this is exactly what you get. So people are running around out there thinking that I'm saying that the people are going to open up and, on police. And you digress. Yeah. I wish no, you, I'm I just wish telling you, you. I wish you a safe journey. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go visit some more of your colleagues. Good. Yes. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate I it. You know, it's really no wonder the liberals don't want to be questioned, ever. It's why they ban journalists. Even their ministers in charge don't know their own portfolios. Liberals' gun legislation relies on the fact that the general public has some level of ignorance of the current laws, and the liberals use that ignorance to attack lawful people who are following the letter of the law exactly as the laws are written. Making criminals out of lawful people will not make lawful people out of criminals. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. Are you enjoying our coverage of the 2019 federal election campaign? You can see all of it at campaign2019.com. Now, unlike the mainstream media and the CBC, Justin Trudeau is not our sugar daddy. We are fiercely independent. We'll never take a penny from the government. We rely on the support of people like you at home. If you can help cover our costs to get our journalists to wherever the news is during this election campaign, you can do that on that website campaign2019.com.